How are you doing? This is David W. Williams, also known as Diamond Dave, right? And what we're going to talk about really quickly is how to get off the endless road of economic failure. And this is going to be a really good video for people that kind of want to understand what are some of the things that I'm involved in that are not going to allow me to become successful, right? So we're going to talk about the problem and then we're going to roll into the solution, right? Now, one of the questions that I want to ask you, because we're going to give the answer to this particular question at the end of this video, right? So just for the people that are going to watch through the whole video, right? They don't have like the five minute attention span. They don't have the uh, the MTV cut attention span, right? And that's one of the characteristics that a lot of times don't allow people to be successful. And we're going to kind of talk about that. And we're going to talk about some of the reasons for that and why I can sympathize with that particular person, because I some I have an understanding of what they're going through. The question we want to ask ourselves, right, is what's going on, Lance? Let me let me stop this real quick. Lance, what's going on, man? I've been trying to reach out to you, so I'm going to try to email you, but I've been trying to reach out to you for 2023. I'm glad you're doing well. I ain't heard from you in a minute. So big up to you and your family. Um, Let's get right back to it, right? One of the questions you want to ask is, what are the characteristics, right? And I should have put an S there, so I apologize for the typo, of a successful group. And if you watch this whole video, we're going to kind of talk about that because successful groups have specific characteristics, right? And unsuccessful groups have unsuccessful characteristics. And I tell you, like, look at the Cleveland Browns. Look at how they operate their uh, organization. Look at their winning record over 20 years. Look at how even though management changes, they still get the same result. If you look at what they do, there's characteristics there. Okay. If you look at other teams like San Francisco that have been winning ever since I was a little kid, if you look at other organizations like Pittsburgh that have long term winning records and you look at the characteristics of that group, you're going to see certain success characteristics. And that's what I want people to understand. So when you're looking at this video, I want you to ask yourself, what are the characteristics? Right. Or what is a characteristic of a successful group? Right. And do you really know what those are? Let's go ahead and get into it because I'm going to kind of give you a story. Right. So what we're going to talk about is that how do you focus on a higher level thinking if you're mentally fatigued? And one of the things I want people to understand when I would tell people, well, how come this NFL team or how come this NBA organization, how come they win so much? Right. Everybody's playing football. Everybody's professionals. Everybody has a they're, they're, they got millions to play with to be successful. And I would ask myself, well, how come certain teams win consistently and other teams don't win consistently? And one of the reasons I had to come to after I did my own analysis is that many people don't want to think their way through the situation. See, when you're playing in the NFL, you have something that we call parity. What we mean by parity is pretty much everybody's at the same level. So what's going to be your edge, right? Right, what's going to be your edge? And when you start asking yourself, what is going to be your edge? Often in this world, your edge is really going to be here. And this is why I tell people all the time, yeah, BlackRock has... Aladdin, which is like a, a big time artificial intelligence that they use. You don't have that. But what do you have that's really more powerful than any supercomputer? What's between your head? And often you've been taught to devalue what's between your head. So you don't realize it. So you think this computer is more important or smarter than you. And you don't really learn to utilize your thinking. Right. And it's our thinking that allowed us to stay alive on this planet for millions of years, because if that thinking wasn't at a higher level, these other animals will be dominating us. And that's not true. We're dominating them unless we get off of Earth and we start going into the water where we can't get any winds. But actually on Earth, on Terra, we dominate other animals. Why? Because we cannot think them. They have physical advantages over us. They have advantages of you know being able to camouflage. They have environmental advantages. They can do things we can't do. But one thing they can't do is they cannot think us on any level. So we, over time, started to dominate them where if you really start to understand the... Uh, not the evolution, but the adaptation of human beings for a very long time. We couldn't eat until other animals eat because we scavenged after them because we didn't know how to hunt. So we had to learn using our brain over time, how to think on a higher level to where now other animals, they can't survive unless we let them survive. Well, for a very long time, we couldn't even eat until other large animals ate because we scavenged off their food, right? We also had to avoid them at all times because they would kill us. So then we had to learn how to build shelter and how to use things to protect us from large animals because a lot of people don't really want to understand that because they think it's a negative, but it really is a reality, right? So I don't want to sidetrack it into like an, an anthropology discussion, right? How do you focus on higher level thinking if you're mentally fatigued, okay? 
And so this is something that impacts a lot of people because what people often do is that they buy courses to improve their situation, right? And then two years later, they're in the same scenario. Then they buy another course and they're in the same scenario. And then they buy another course in the same scenario. I was going with my, look, talking to my admin today and I was saying that we have people that buy my course and two years later they reach back out and they have questions about being able to get access to the course. And when we look at our database, it shows that they bought it two years ago. And I said, I don't blame them because I understand what they're going through. And we're going to kind of talk about that today because my ability to solve this problem has allowed me to be more successful than the average person. And this was something that I dealt with for a very long period of time uh, because I couldn't figure out what I needed to do to solve this particular problem. So let me tell you a story real quick, right? So I'm from Orlando, Florida, okay? And one thing we know in Orlando, Florida is that it's a city that is not filled with a lot of like really highly skilled people. Um, there's a lot of what we call service work there because of the tourist industry. So let's just say this guy's name is Tom, Bob, Larry. It doesn't matter what his name is, right? And he works in Orlando, Florida. He works at one of the theme parks, okay? Now, we know that the average income in Orlando is at around 39000 That's median, 30000 for for women, right? So that's median income in the city of Orlando, around 39000 medium, plus or minus $2,400, 30000 for women, plus or minus 1000 right? So he's not one of these people that on the internet that's doing six figures like everybody on the internet is doing. So I'm not talking about y'all. I'm talking about the people that's in the city that I'm from. Well, most people don't even check 40,000 a year. That's median if they're a man. If they're a woman, they don't check 30,000 a year median. If they're a woman, that's median income. It's not really average, but it's really the middle, right? We got outliers top and bottom, okay? I can show a map and show you by zip code how much people make in Orlando, but that's a little bit more higher level, deeper content, right? So we have this guy in Orlando, okay? He makes that amount of money, okay? So now what he does is because... He works at the theme park and he doesn't really make enough money to get a car. What he does is he takes the bus to work. So let's say he works at Disney. Disney got around 77,000 cast members, right? Which makes it the biggest single site employer inside the United States, right? So you got to realize is that in Central Florida, our largest employer in Central Florida, but really the state of Florida, but really Central Florida, our largest employer is Disney World, right? So every day we got thousands of people waking up, going to Disney. At the end of the day, we got a thousand people going home in Orlando, Florida. And they do this day in and day out, seven days a week. Been going on for decades. It's going to be going on when we pass away. Okay? So that's what I want you to understand. So this is what this guy does. Now, when you really start to understand Orlando from a, a, a geographical standpoint, he doesn't live close to Disney World, right? So he lives on West Orlando, and Disney World is in South Orlando. It's really in Osceola County, but we'll call it South Orlando. So every day, he wakes up, he takes the bus to Disney, takes the bus home. Now, to go from West Orlando to Disney, what he's often doing is he's jump catching the bus, transferring downtown, which you call a transfer, transferring to another bus that's taking him to Disney. Then when he gets off work, he's going from Disney, going downtown, transferring, and going back to West Orlando. That trip might take you an hour and a half to two hours, right? And so that's pretty much his daily schedule, okay? Working at Disney, he's not a high-skilled, highly uh, paid employee, right? And this is how he pays his rent, maintains himself. Now he's a single man, so he don't necessarily have children. He got to worry about anything of that nature. He just got to worry about himself. But what happens is the, the lifestyle that he's trying to support, it wears you out. Because what? I got to wake up every day. I got to take two hours just to get to work. I got to work eight and a half, nine hours, working in the service sector, working with a lot of people, doing a lot of times extremely difficult work. And I don't mean difficult from a technical standpoint. I mean, you just got to do a lot of work, right? To make the money that I'm making, take the bus back home. And then I really don't make a lot of money. So what I worried about, am I going to be able to pay my bills? Um, am I going to be able to make this particular bill? If I got a family member that needs some help, can I help them out? So what happens is I'm always under a large degree of stress. But it's mental stress, right? But I'm under a large degree of stress because I deal with a lot of anxiety. I'm always worried about my situation, right? So then what I do to get out of that, a lot of times people get into a lot of destructive behavior. Sexually, they get into a lot of destructive behavior from a, a substance abuse standpoint. They get into a lot of destructive behavior from a relationship standpoint. They start acting out 
because they're really under a large degree of stress that they don't necessarily know how to manage in a positive way because they haven't been taught these skills. And so they just get into this routine. And so they just get into this routine. Now, what happens is they try to figure a way out of the routine by purchasing something that they believe is going to help them. But the problem is that they're in the routine. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? And what happens often to a lot of people is that when they get done working at the end of the day, they're so mentally fatigued from what they had to do over the course of that 24 hour period. When they get home, what do they want to do? They just want to kick back and relax because you got a short amount of time before you got to get up and do it all over again. When you get your two days off on the weekend, what do you want to do? You just want to vegetate out because what you're trying to really do is decompress from everything you had to do uh, Monday through Friday. Right. So when you have the two days off that you get in a row, one, you got to run your errands. Then you got to do these particular type of things. And so what I want people to understand is that how do you focus on higher level thinking if you're always mentally fatigued? And what a lot of people don't understand, and I've seen this in the city that I'm from, is they, the, the, the biggest employment that you can get is working in the service sector. Many of these jobs will leave you mentally fatigued. And because they're not highly skilled jobs, they don't pay you a lot of money. So you just get into this loop. Right. And you don't figure out how to get into the loop. And then everybody manages the loop because why? The system of the society that we live in in Florida, it needs you to be involved in this loop because we got 77,000 people, right? We got 77,000 people that work at this particular business. So what do they need? They need people to elect to be involved in this loop all the time, right? They don't need people to not elect to be involved in this loop. So they condition you like that this loop is something that you want to be involved in, Okay. It's very easy to get these jobs. But if you knew what West Orlando was and you knew what Disney was, you would ask yourself, well, why do people want to go that far to get to work all the time? Because that's the job they can get. Or you can go work on international. Right. So the city is set up to produce these type of workers. I had a really good conversation with Erica about two years ago. We were talking about, like, how come um, we have what we call in my city um, so many low income, so many. Uh, I would call government programs to put people in low income housing. You want to know why? Because they don't want you to leave Orlando. So they make it real easy for you to stay there. So we have a lot of government programs to put people in what we call low income housing. They will build you at one time. They were building these brand new houses in parts of the town that people didn't really want to live in. But the problem is, once again, you get stuck in this pattern because they don't want you to leave. Disney needs almost 100,000 people to work in that business every day. Right. We're not just talking about the theme parks. Disney is really a resort business that has theme parks attached to it. And the average person doesn't really understand how massive their footprint is. So that's why DeSantis talking that stuff. It was it was it was it's, it's a political charade for anybody that's actually from the state of Florida and understands how big that business is. A lot of people based on where they live in the country, there is no business that's equivalent to Disney World in their city or even in their state. There is no equivalency. Maybe uh, if you're from Texas, maybe the energy industry. But most people live in a state where they don't have any business that would even be comparable to a Disney World in their state, where they that many people are dependent upon that one business to make sure they pay their bills every month. OK, and then those people are taxed. Those taxes go back out into the city of Orlando. They create bonds off that particular footprint. It's a massive money making operation. Right. That's not going anywhere anytime soon. And so what they do is they get people into the cycle. And what happens is. People are so stressed out, they can't figure out how to get out of the cycle to do something different with their life, right? They can't figure out how to do it. And so as a result, they stay stuck. And they stay stuck and they stay stuck. And so they look up and they're 50, 60 years old, and they've done all these things that haven't added up to anything. Now, we're talking about a single man. Imagine if you are a single woman with children in this particular loop. How do you get out, right? How do you, how do you get out of this loop? And so what people don't understand is that this system is designed to get you in this loop because it needs you in this loop to maintain the system. And this is what I think a lot of people don't get. This is a this is really an economic loop. So that's why I'm not passionate about this other stuff they try to bring to us, because I can tell this guy. Yeah, you can go to Disney and you can put a dress on. And I don't care because you know what? You still in my loop that I built for you economically. So I can make you think you've made an advancement, but you have made no advancement because I've just made it easier for you to stay in this loop. And a lot of people can't get that, but I can. So I'm very 
gung ho about getting people to look at their economic situation that impacts the rest of their life and understand that everything that they're giving you that they're telling you is a solution to your problem is never going to solve your economic problem. So you end up right back where you started and you think they gave you something. They're giving you nothing because Disney doesn't exist if we don't have 77,000 people to say yes to the deal they got for them. Right? International Drive doesn't exist if we don't get thousands of people to say yes to the deal we got for them. Rosen, who's a big hotel guy, who's not a bad person, but he runs a hotel business. He needs thousands of people to do low income jobs in his hotel. He needs them to say yes to that deal. If they don't say yes, he don't have a hotel business. I'm not saying he's a bad guy. I don't think he's a bad guy. In fact, I think he's a hell of a business person. But the way his business is structured, he doesn't have a business based on high skilled employees. He has a business to where you can be a Haitian person and you can come to America and you don't even have to speak English and he can give you a job at his hotel. So it's a benefit. but do you how do you not get stuck in that cycle? Because if you work at his hotel, you're gonna work real hard because he runs a very busy hotel business. This is what I want people to understand. So if you are stuck at this level where I'm just trying to make it through life, you end up being very mentally fatigued. That mental fatigue doesn't allow you to sit back and say, How do I get out of this scenario? And do you start to normalize the fatigue and then you just look for ways of escapism? to get out of, the, you know, to feel a little bit better about yourself, but it don't change your real problem, right? So let me give another example, right, of myself, right? Because I'm talking about this particular person. Let me show you this real quick. So we were talking about people riding the bus, right? So here's the buses that go to SeaWorld. Uh, Oak Ridge to International Drive, okay? This West Oak Ridge Road, and I'll show you one day, we'll look up uh, zip code data, the income data. This is a lower income part of the city. Downtown Orlando, so this is where you transfer, right? So you go downtown to the downtown terminal and you transfer to Magic Kingdom. SeaWorld to International Airport, right? So we go to SeaWorld and it takes you out to the airport. Neighborhood Link, Williamsburg. I don't even know where that's at. Raleigh Street, Kirkman Drive, West Orlando. This takes you to Universal Studios, right? So Raleigh Street is by a neighborhood called Carver Shores. It's a lower income part of the city. That's, that's West Orlando now. Now that's turning Brazilian, but for a long time it was, it was historically black. Pine Hills. Now, people that's from West Orlando, West Orange County know about Pine Hills. It's considered a higher crime, lower income area. Not the whole area because I got family that live in Pine Hills. They don't live in a high crime area. But Pine Hills on average, yeah, you'll lose your life in Pine Hills. You go out there playing with them people. Americana Boulevard, another lower income area, right, that takes you to Universal. Now we got Walt Disney World, West US 92, which is going to be south part of the city, right, that feeds into that. So you see that they set up all these bus services to hit these lower income parts of the city so they can feed people into their particular system. So they make it very easy for you to get public transportation into that particular business. Right. And so that's what I want you to understand is that they understand how to facilitate to keep their business going by making it easy for you to get their business. Now, it's not a negative. People need work. But what I want you to understand is that when you have to travel all this while on the bus to get to work, then you got to work. Then you got to take that same bus two hours to get back. It's fatiguing, right? It's fatiguing. So you stay in this cycle. So when I was in college, right, I was working and went to school. So I went to a community college. I worked and I went to school. Now, my schedule was I woke up in the morning. I went to class. I had two classes in the morning. I came home. I made my lunch or I ate something and then I went to work. I came back. I tried to study for like an hour, went to bed, right? Went to bed, woke up and did it uh, every Monday, Wednesday and Friday, Tuesday and Thursday. I didn't have to go to school, right? I was only taking two classes because that's all I could handle because I had to work full time. In fact, I was probably working 50 hours a week because I worked in manufacturing. I was always very mentally fatigued, right? I was always very mentally fatigued. But I understood I need to do something with my life. Now, knowing what I know now, I would have went into real estate. But I didn't know about real estate back then. I would have took that energy and went into real estate. But me not knowing what I know now, I said, let me go ahead and try to get my college degree and finish my degree out. And so I had to work full time and do the schoolwork. It was very mentally fatiguing. Now, I wasn't trying to figure out how to take care of children. I wasn't figuring out, you know, where am I going to stay next week? Because I was making enough money to pay those bills. But you have people in my city that are barely making it. And then they think, well, I'm going to try to do this different to change my life. 
but they really don't have the mental energy to pull that off. They really don't because just their day-to-day -day life is very mentally fatiguing. And I think this is something a lot of people don't really understand. So that's why when somebody buys my course and I notice that they haven't looked at it in two years, I have an idea of probably what they're going through because I know a lot of people are dealing with a level of instability and they're trying to manage that. And then they also have other things like family, health, other issues that they were dealing with before they ever met me that they're still trying to manage because I know because I had to try to work my way through those situations. I'm working a I'm working a nine to five job and going to school and I'm having issues with my manager and I'm trying to figure out, am I going to be able to keep the job so I can stay in school and keep my place and keep my car? Right. Or you barely making enough money and you in school and you got a car repair and the car repair is five hundred dollars and you barely got enough money. You might have three, four hundred dollars at the end of the month after you pay all your bills. And then now you got to pay a five hundred dollar car bill, which means what you got to charge it, which puts you into debt. So this is why I, I try to get people to understand. I have not lived a soft life. Now, the reason why I didn't live a soft life, a lot of that I brought on myself. But I can tell you 100 percent, I haven't lived no soft life. And I don't have to get on here and tell crime stories and this. That. That's not my marketing. But I didn't live a soft life. A soft life didn't get me here. So I understand what people are going through and what they're trying to work their way through. And that's why I try to tell people, right, there's solutions to your problems, but you got to understand you have to focus on thinking on a higher level, even though you're mentally fatigued, right? So we're going to now go into some of the solutions because I don't want to talk about the problem ad nauseum, right? So here's one of the things I want to talk about. You got to realize what the trap is and don't get into it. One of the things that we don't tell people, and this is why I have an issue with like a lot of the solutions they give to us that, you know, they use the insider. So right now they're talking about in the state of Florida. Um, there were particular segments of this AP Black History of Black Studies course that they were supposed to include. OK, DeSantis and his administration, they said they didn't want to go through with it. Now the politicians on the other side are talking about this is a big issue. OK, in the state of Florida, retirees can't even figure out where they're going to stay because of the rising cost of rent. Right. People can't buy homes in the state of Florida because they don't make enough money to buy a house because we got a real big service economy. These service economy people making thirty nine thousand dollars a year median. These women making $30,000 a year median cannot buy a home in the state of Florida. But I'm supposed to believe that the problem is that they won't include intersectionality, queer studies, and something else in AP Black Studies, which most people are not going to be in the AP course. Most people don't. I didn't take AP course in high school. I graduated. Most people don't take AP course in high school, right? So if you haven't had an issue with the way in which they uh, uh, facilitate Black history in the state of Florida before now, why do you care now? But so this is some of the traps they spring for us. They constantly tell us that every solution to our problem is not our economic issue. But the real issues in the state of Florida, economic issues that nobody wants to fix because it's going to put you in opposition to a lot of the uh, uh, what I would call the static powers of the people that are in power in the state of Florida that literally need thousands of people to be economically depressed so they can keep maintaining their business model. So both sides don't have don't have a solution to that problem. So they're going to tell me now the, the, the story is going to be AP black studies and the fact that he won't allow intersectionality, yada, yada, yada. And this and now I'm supposed to have an issue with it, but I can't figure out how I'm going to buy a house in the state of Florida, even though I work 40 hours a week. Because I never be able to get the deposit. Then if I do, I'm overpaying for the house. So I'm worried about where I better make the payments right over time if my pay don't keep going up. So I'm trying to figure out what can I do to get out of that product? Do I need to upskill myself, yada, yada, yada. But I'm working 40 hours a week and I'm dead tired from working 40 hours a week and I'm a single person with no children. So imagine if I was a woman with children, what would my stress level be? So we got to realize what the trap is. The trap is you a lot of times don't realize how important your economic situation is until you're already in it. Because we don't teach you from the gate, this is how important it is. We should be teaching young people in, in literally grade school. It shouldn't be about, just this stuff they're talking about, how this particular economic system is set up and how you can fall into a trap in it, which can be much more difficult to get out of once you get into it. But we need people in this trap to maintain the system because the system don't work. If 77,000 people don't decide to go work at Disney, Disney don't have a business model. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? They need people to be appropriate for those working conditions, right? So either they got to bring in some immigrants or they're going to use the people they currently got in the city. But somebody has to work there, right? Because those jobs can't go unfilled. So you got to realize is that 
you got to realize what the trap is. So, Mr. Theodore, what we're going to try to do is make sure that you stay uh, on the topic, right? So you got to make sure that we realize what the trap is. And often, and I'm, I'm going to say this again, when we try to bring up the economic issue, people come with every other issue under the moon. Because why? We're never supposed to take our economic situation serious. So people get told, we will finance you to distract us from the economic issue. So that's why everybody shows up with everything else except the economic issue. I just want to talk about the economic issue. I don't care about nothing else. Right? I don't care about anything else. I don't care what you do. Because the question is, after you get done doing that, has your economic situation changed? So then after you get done doing what they told you was going to make you appropriate or equivalent to them, when you get done acting out and doing that type of stuff, has your economic situation changed? Are you in the same economic situation? And so often when I deal with black people of all backgrounds and I ask them that situation, they start to realize what the trap is. Right? Because that's the only thing I want to ask you. When you get done doing all this other stuff, so let's say we get this AP course pulled in with everything. They, so I, I'm the governor of the state of Florida, right? Y'all can put whatever y'all want to put in the course. I don't care. When we get done doing that, now can we focus on the economic issue? Because that doesn't change the economic issue for thousands of people in the state of Florida, whether or not that stuff is in the course. Don't change it. If that stuff is in the course or not in the course, they got the same economic situation. So we got to realize what the trap is, is that the real trap is to keep you so economically stressed out. You can never focus on getting into another situation. Because by the time you realize this is a bad deal, you got so much weight on your back, you can't figure out how to get the weight off your back. Right. Because it took a lot of work for me to get through school, working full time and, and, and going to school. It took me six years to get a bachelor's degree. Right. Most people would lose focus on the way. They lose it. Right. I didn't. Because one thing about me is if I zoom in on somebody or something, I don't I don't lose focus. That's what a lot of people don't understand. If I make you my special project, you're going to be my special project. So I get done with the situation. Right. So I was able to figure out how to take that intensity and take that focus and try to do it for a positive as opposed to doing it for a negative. But like I said, if I say, OK, we can do let, let's let's do the AP course. That's cool. When do we focus on the economic situation? Because that doesn't change the economic situation for the people in West Orlando. They still got to wake up every day and go to Disney. So whether or not they take that AP course or not, their economic situation is going to stay the same. And how does that AP course help improve their economic situation? Right? So they let's say they learn what's in that course. How does it help them economically and make them more economically competitive in this American environment or in that state environment? How does it change that? It doesn't. But I'm supposed to believe this is the important stuff. So what I want us to understand is that I don't I'm not saying that you can't be diversified. I'm not saying that you can't have a comprehensive understanding of an issue. What I'm saying is that every time we talk about our economic situation and how things impact us economically, not only do we get Anglos trying to distract us, we get Negroes trying to come up and get attention by distracting us. I don't care about nothing else. Y'all do that other stuff. I don't care about that. Right. Because my what I always see with our people is it always roll back to our economic situation. It doesn't roll back to this other stuff because we do all that other stuff real well, but it always rolls back to our economic situation. So I'm trying to figure out why you keep trying to distract me from the ball. Right. So really, you must be on the other team because I'm trying to focus on the ball. And here you show up trying to get me to get my eyes off the ball. And the first thing coach going to tell you is don't take your eyes off the ball. Right. So let's get to the next one. You got to decide you're going to focus X amount of time to get the change and lock in. And this is the difficult part. Because I'm trying to balance all this other stuff, it can be difficult to say, well, you know what? I'm going to take, Erica was talking about this in an earlier video. I'm going to take this amount of years and I'm just going to lock in on what I got going on. And that can be the difficult part because I have all these other external things going on that I'm trying to manage because my life is already unstable because my economic situation is not great. So I'm worried about whether or not I'm going to be able to pay my rent when they renew my lease. I'm worried about if I, my car breaks down, can I uh, get my car fixed? I'm worried about uh, can I, if my kid want to take this trip, do I have the money for that? Right? So then when I'm trying to lock in on changing my life, all these other things is going on around me. And often, because they also taught us for everybody to be separate and nobody to be together, you trying to juggle all these balls all by yourself. You ain't got nobody else to hand it to. Because not only are people anti-family 
we also anti-interpersonal relationships. So people just by themselves. So not only do you not have another person to lean on, you don't have a family to lean on. So when these things start adding up and you start getting more and more on your plate, what happens? You just collapse and you just get stuck in this routine. So you look up and you're much older and nothing about your life has changed except your life's got worse. So one of the things I was able successful in doing is focusing X amount of time to get your change and lock in. And don't worry about nothing else. Right. I don't care about anything that they're trying to. Um, I don't care about anything else they're talking about except my economic issue, because it doesn't matter. This other stuff is not going to change anything for your life. And that's what I keep trying to get our people to understand. Everything else is a distraction from your economic issue and really your economic and your health issue. Right. Those are really your two most important issues, your health and your economic situation. Everything else is a distraction. You should keep asking yourself, how come every time I talk about my health or my economic issue, here comes everybody else with every other issue under the map? And they'll never add, answer that question. And we've trained our own people to show up. I do a live stream talking about economic issues and everybody shows up with every other issue except that. I'm talking about the economic piece. Why you keep bringing other information to me? That's not what I'm talking about. I was talking to my admin today. Every time I asked them, how, did you, how do you do this sequentially? Every time they got away from that, I said, hold on for a second. Let's roll back to what I asked you originally. How do you do this sequentially? I need the steps. As every time they tried to get off that, I said, stop. I need to get you back on track because this is how we've been programmed. We've been programmed to get off track all the time. And successful groups don't get off track. They say, this is what we're going to do. And that's what we go do. They don't get distracted, right? Their discipline and what they're doing is extremely high, right? And so that's what I try to get people to understand, right? You're being distracted from what is going to allow you to improve your situation because they taught you that's what's going to get you attention from them. That's how you're going to get elevated in society. So when we sit down and say, okay, let's talk about how we're going to improve this situation. And we put our economic piece on the table. Everything else becomes the bigger story. And so then what happens is you look up 30, 40, 50 years down the road and nothing has changed, right? Because one day I'm going to tell you all the story about how we dropped the ball in Orlando because we talked about one of the biggest tourist cities in the whole world. We have literally millions of people coming to our city every year, spending millions of dollars and black people in Orlando don't get any of the money. They get it working for the attractions, but they don't get any of that tourist money coming to their group. Why? Because economics is never our issue. Our issue is everything else except that. And then this system promotes black people for going in front of us and telling us, well, everything is more important than your economic issue. And But that's how they support themselves economically by doing that. So Crump gets, I heard, 40% of every case he does. So Crump don't care if he's going to sit there and legislate or, or litigate the cat in the hat. He gets 40%. So his economic wherewithal comes from him being a distraction. But that don't benefit us. That benefits him. And so what I want you to understand is that the way in which I've been able to be successful is I just lock in. And I don't worry about nothing else because I can't change it anyway. Right? And I realize that this system benefits from everybody being distracted. But I try to tell people, if you want to try to get some success, the way I did it is I just locked in. Right. And I didn't I didn't even I won't even talk to people about certain stuff if it's not business related. I don't hit people up and be like, hey, how you doing? If it ain't about money and business, ain't nothing to talk about. Because I want you to understand how serious I am about stuff, because that's really how I've been successful. Right. I had a homegirl. I used to go around her way. She lived in this hood in, in Orlando called Gotham City. Right. So I would go through Gotham City to holler at this chick about something. And she would have some of the baddest chicks in the world over there. I didn't care. Why? Cause I'm over here to make money. She had a bunch of other flunkies over there and they was flunkies. They got distracted and this and that. So literally they was working for that chick. I never worked for her. Why? Cause she realized when Dave come over here, Dave bought his money, nothing else. Ain't nothing else going on, but I need to holler at you about one, two, three, so I can make me some money. So we built a respect level because she realized that Dave only coming over here to make money. He ain't worried about these girls. I got none of that. Cause I ain't care about that. Why? Cause that don't pay me. You understand me? We haven't really figured out how to really lock in on our economic situation and to make our conversations based around that because we've been socializing where it's not important 
And we don't realize a lot of our life stress is coming because it's coming from the fact that we don't have enough economically. Then that builds up a lot of stress in our life. And then we act out. And then now what they do to provide you with a solution is everything else except the economic solution. Right. If you make thirty thousand dollars a year in Orlando, Florida, and you have two children, you need to make more money. But they'll tell you everything else is a solution. You need to go live the soft life. No, you need to go make some more money. But then how do you make more money with the two children? So now what you use as escapism is, well, I'm going to go live the soft life or I'm going to go marry this dude and he's going to take care of me. Because the problem is that they realize they got you in such a deep hole. It's going to take you three to five years to get out. And you don't want to spend the three to five years trying to get out. So now they just feed you escapism for the rest of your life. And that's how they get you. Right. And so then what you do is you replicate that replicates in your children and they play the same thing out. That's how they get everybody. Because they built this whole system based on you having to be in an economic situation to take their deal. Because if you got tech skills, you're not going to go work at Disney. So what do we do? You make sure a certain amount of y'all don't ever get tech skills. Right. Or if you know how to get your money out of the market, you never go work at Disney. So what do we make sure? We make sure we never teach y'all nothing about the markets. So we make you appropriate for this, this slot we got for you way ahead of time so that by the time we get you to that slot, you pretty much already made a decision for yourself. You don't see nowhere else you fit. And then what y'all do is y'all feedback mechanisms into each other. So we reinforce the lack of understanding in this area into each other because as soon as one person says, yo, let's talk about this, it becomes a story. The story becomes everything else. And that's what I want people to really understand, right? So that's the second thing. Third thing, realize it'll cost you, right? Your, if you want to make a change in life, it's going to cost you the, your, your former life or your current life, right? The goal is to get you to accept that. So the person that I used to be couldn't do what I was doing right now. I had to change who I was. I had to really change my identity because that person was not effective in this new reality. So what I, I had to realize is that I have to actually change who I am as a person to be more effective or to be effective in a new environment or in really in a new reality. Because really what you do is you create a new timeline. Many people want to stay that old person and think that old person is going to work on a new timeline. It won't work. Don't mean you got to change your core values, but you got to change a lot of things about yourself. I'm way more patient than I used to be. Uh, my behavior is a lot more level. There's things that used to set me off that don't set me off. Why? Because that won't work in this new timeline. Right. So a lot of people, they don't want to give up their old life to get a new situation. But sometimes that's what it's going to cost you. But because you may have been taught that I got to stick to that old life. Right. That's just so valuable to me. Oh, I just I love that old life so much. You'll buy a course from somebody and don't realize the cost of the course is not the money. The cost of the course is your old life. You don't realize that. See, so so that's what people don't get. See, because we live in a world where you can go on YouTube and get to Kabbalion. You can go on YouTube and get to Emerald Tablets off YouTube. You can go on YouTube and get to MetaNeta. Historically, you had to join a secret society. And then you had to be proven in the secret society to get access to the information. So first you had to get accepted in the secret society. Then you had to show you was you was valuable enough or you was proven enough to get access to the information now people just get the information so they don't realize the cost of the the course is really changing your life they think the cost of the course is the money now that's not that's not the cost but that's what they that's how they live their life so they don't really realize that it don't matter what i buy until i change who i am i'm never going to be appropriate to the situation let's say i go into real estate and let's say me and a contractor got an issue. And I say, well, you know what? I pull a gun out and shoot the contractor. That's not going to work. So just because I might have did that 10 years ago, that don't mean that's going to work now. Because once the word get out, at any time you and David get into an issue, a contract issue, he's going to pull a gun out and shoot you. I'm not going to be able to get no contractors. And I'm going to prison. So I can buy any real estate course in the world. Until I change that about myself, I can't do real estate. So, so, so it's not about the cost of the real estate course. It's about do I change who I am and how I go about doing things so I can make myself much more effective in a new world. Many people want to stay they self and get a new result. It don't work that way. And I can, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm telling you from my own experience. It don't work that way. So that's one of the biggest problems is that I buy something. 
I want to, if I make, let me explain something to you. If you make $40,000 a year, do you realize you think like somebody that makes 40 grand a year? That's what most people don't want to accept that. If you make 40 grand a year, you think like somebody that makes 40 grand a year. This is America. This is not like, it don't like, it's not like we live in the Gambia. We live in America, right? This is a very liquid economy. If you make 40 grand a year, you think like somebody that makes 40 grand a year. If you make $100,000 a year, you think like somebody that makes $100,000 a year. That's your behavior pattern. That's your actions, right? If you make a million five a year, you think like somebody that makes a million five. So you got to be crazy if you make 40 grand a year and you think you want to make a million. If you think the way you conduct yourself with somebody that makes 40 grand a year going to help you make a million. Don't work that way. It, it just doesn't work that way. Do some people have built in advantages? Yeah, but that's not your situation. So you can't depend on that, right? But you got to ask yourself, who do I need to be to get into this new timeline, right? And that's why I'm trying to tell you, don't get on a timeline that's going to put you in a bad situation to where you got to take a bus to work two hours uh, a day. You got to take a bus two hours back and you still only going to make $35,000 a year. And you're supposed to build a life off of that. It's next to impossible. So you're just going to always be in a struggle. But you got to realize the system needs people to make that decision to keep pushing the system because Disney needs 70,000 people to work for them every day, right? Universal probably needs 20,000 odd people to work for them every day. These jobs are not going anywhere. I'm from a part of Florida where people used to pick oranges for a living. So you know what? The orange industry needed people to say yes to picking oranges every day. You go down south, they got sugar cane. They need people to say yes to picking sugar cane every day, right? And so once you your community says yes to this stuff, you normalize this stuff. Everybody just falls in line and nobody figures out how to change it unless maybe like you could play football or something. But, you know, South Florida, a Bell Glade area, Pahokee area, they need thousands of people to say yes to picking sugar cane. Right? Plant City need literally thousands of people to say yes to picking strawberries every day. They need these jobs. So they need to condition you to make you think, well, it's cool for me to do that. I'm not saying you don't have to do what you got to do. But when you try to change from that, if you got to go pick strawberries every day, it can be very difficult to get out of that pattern because of the mental fatigue that comes with that kind of work. You're working in the sun all day. It's hard work. It's hard labor. Right. So that's what I want people to understand, because I'm going to do a video for my options traders and I'm going to kind of get them to understand the way I look at the market is different because I don't expect anybody to give me the answer. I don't. I never did. I learned I, so people don't really. I taught myself how to trade options because I never expected nobody to give me the answer. Just never did. Right. What I do is I use people to inspire me to do research. I ain't never expect nobody to give me the answer. Ever never did. So because I never did, I was able to figure out how to trade because I never. So I, that's why I don't do certain offers in the market because I don't want to teach you that the answer got to come from me. I don't want to teach you that. Because what if I die tomorrow? Then where are you going to get the answer from? But you got to realize is that I know I'm working against a, a system that has programmed people to where, well, I just cut on this TV show and this person gives me the answer. This person gives me my walking orders every day. This person tells me what I should think about this topic. I'm not trying to produce that because that keeps this thing going that they got going that so many people can't figure out how to get out of. Right. Because if you live in the state of Florida, the solution to your problem and your problem is not the AP course. That's not your problem. Your problem is economics. Right. In my opinion, you may go research and realize it's something different. But I don't believe that if you live in the state of Florida and you are economically stressed and you can't buy a home. And you don't know how you're ever going to buy a house because the housing properties have shot through the roof. And you think the solution to your problem is that either you're for or against an AP Black History course. That don't have nothing to do with nothing. Because if they solve that problem, your economic situation stays the same, right? So no matter which way that problem falls on, when that is finished, here they come with another problem, but you got the same economic situation, the same way that they did with Disney. Disney and their woke ideology was supposed to be the problem. Now he's walked away from that, but you know what? Your economic situation is the same. Inflation is the same. The PCE data is going to be what the PCE data is. The price of eggs is through the roof. Lucky for me, I don't eat eggs anymore. It ain't no but a matter of time before the price of milk go through the roof. It ain't no but a matter of time before the price of meat go through the roof. But they're going to always have another problem, another distraction 
from what your economic situation is because you just got to figure that out on your own. So that's what I want you to understand is that successful groups can solve their own problems to go ahead and wrap this up because I don't want to be rambling because I got a seven o'clock. What is the characteristic of a successful group, right? One, they can identify what their real problem is. They don't let people come to them and tell them, well, this is your problem. So I'm telling you, I don't have enough money to feed my children. And you're telling me that my problem is an AP course, right? Or my problem is that these people got an agenda. My question is, y'all got an agenda to keep me broke. I don't care about nobody else's agenda, right? Y'all got an agenda to keep me broke because the people that y'all claim got an agenda, they not the people that stole all the wealth from my family. So you, that's how you can't play me with that. That don't work on me. That work on a lot of other people. But the people that you claim got an agenda, you know what? They didn't steal all the wealth from my family. They didn't do that. They didn't deny my family the GI Bill when they came home from World War II. So you can't distract me with that, right? So that's what I want you to understand. Successful groups can identify what their real problem is, right? Then another thing they can do is they can figure out how to solve their problem, right? Most people, most unsuccessful groups cannot solve their own problems. So the problem is they go to somebody else to get a solution. And that's never going to be a solution to their problem, right? So they can identify what their real problem is. They go to another group of people to get a solution to their problem. And those people never give you a real solution to their problem because you having a problem is that other group solution. You got to really understand how this thing is set up, in my opinion. Don't got to be your opinion, but that's how I see the world. Right. So I'm not talking about I don't have issues with individuals. But you can't put me you can't make me think I'm supposed to beef with this group of people. When I'm telling you that these are my problems and those people didn't create my problem. So why, why are they my problem then? If they didn't create it, I know who created my problem. So you can't distract me like that. But I come from real politics. So I don't let another group give me my politics. I'm from West Orlando. We don't do that. I don't know where y'all from. So that's what y'all do. But I'm from a certain setup. I don't let another group give me my politics. We got our own politics. So we define who our own enemies are. I don't let somebody gas me up to think, well, this is no, that's not the case. Right. It don't work like that with me. So I apply that to every situation that I go into. But like I said, I come from real politics. I know a lot of y'all don't come from no politics. Y'all just come from whatever's on TV that day. That's what I go with. Right. And I really encourage y'all. It'll benefit y'all if y'all really learn how to actually function on the politics. But that's some higher level stuff that a lot of people ain't ready for. Right. So that's why we're going to talk about. I got a seven o'clock because I'm finna get here in do going to talk about some real estate. And like I told you, I had to learn that the way I function was not appropriate for every scenario. So it don't matter what course I bought. I wasn't going to work in that scenario anyway, because I had to change stuff about myself. Right. A lot of people used to tell me you're way too intense about things. I had to bring that down because that works as an entertainer. It doesn't work in real life situations because you literally scare people off. People talk big on the internet. In real life, a lot of people don't want certain scenarios. They don't want to be around certain situations. It makes them uncomfortable. So you got to learn how to be more approachable in certain scenarios. So these are things I had to work on, right? Hope you got some value from it. We're going to read these super chats. We're going to get up on out of here, man. So Mr. G, man, I appreciate the $10, man. Appreciate you for always supporting the platform. And so Mr. G is somebody that came into the program. He applied the situations and he kept pushing it. And one thing about me and Mr. G, we don't let nothing come between the economic conversation. Right. I'm, I don't care about what other people I'm here to help you from an economic standpoint. Y'all have your own situations. Go. I'm not here to change your mind in that. And so that's something I think a lot of us don't understand is when it comes to this economic stuff. I don't care about none of the rest of that stuff because I'm not here to change your mind in that area. Right. So me and Mr. G and a lot of other people in the trading group, we can sit down and talk about the economic situation. We don't let all that other stuff come in because I'm not here to change your mind on that. I'm here to try to help you get a better understanding of your economic situation and help you change that. But you have to decide that that's a problem in your group. Many of y'all haven't even figured out what the problems are in your group. And the problems that you think are have been given to you by somebody else, you solve that problem, you're still going to be in the same pot because that's not your real problem. But that's my opinion. You might see it different. Right. But appreciate the uh, $10, Mr. G. Ray Gun, man, I appreciate the $2. Let me see who else. Erica, man, I appreciate the 20 dollars. Erica did a really, really good, good live stream uh, today. Uh, you need to check that out. And when she was talking about um, the stuff when she was taking the pills and she had all that energy, that was hilarious. So she did a really good live stream today. You need to check that out. So I appreciate everybody for coming through. Like I said, I got to get on this other live. 
Um, want y'all to be safe out here, man. Make sure y'all take care of yourself, right? Uh, real quick, Erica says the pre decompression time is real. Most definitely it is, right? I was talking to somebody earlier today about getting massages, right? Take some time off, try to decompress, try not try to de-stress so you're not always operating on level 10 um, because it can put you in a situation where you can never stop to focus on what you need to do, right? Hope you got some value from it. David W. Williams, also known as Dominic Dave. I'll talk to you later.